When you sit back and take a look at handheld consoles, you see a lot of mobile games being ported over to them. Now when you look at all of these mobile ports, they basically fall into two categories. You've got games that are straight ports with virtually no changes and all of the microtransactions intact, such was the case with the Switch port of the Elder Scrolls Blades. And then you've got the ports that had a bit more effort put into them. Games like, say, Modern Combat Blackout, where the microtransaction system was removed and the currency gain was modified to accommodate for that. Today we're going to talk about a game that falls into the latter category, but still has a lot of criticism because of its high price. Here is my review of Into the Dead 2 for the Nintendo Switch. As far as the story goes, this is a pretty simple zombie apocalypse scenario. You play as a man who ventured into town to grab supplies and something goes wrong with your truck, getting you stranded and separated from your sister and daughter. You then spend the rest of the game running across various areas trying to get back and reconnect with them. Now I'm not saying the story is poor because it's a basic scenario, but it does take a really long time to really get going. I would say the first 15 or so stages of the 60 stage campaign doesn't really give you that much information. And when you start unlocking side stories and going through those, you realize that the side stories are much better at storytelling than the main story. Now when it comes to gameplay, this game is classified as a first person shooter endless runner. As you go through each stage, you'll be constantly running through 3D environments, shooting zombies in your way and collecting ammo on your race for survival. Now just to clarify, there is a pretty big amount of difference between the mobile version and Switch version of Into the Dead 2. I'll get into this a little bit more later, but do note that the microtransaction system is now completely gone. As you dive into the game for the first time, you've basically got three different game modes you can go through. Story mode, where you can trek through the 60 stage campaign and experience the main story. Side stories that are their own little mini campaigns and unlock as you progress the main campaign with the exception of the two purchasable DLC campaigns based off of Night of the Living Dead and the original Ghostbusters movie. And finally, you've got Arcade Mode, which is kind of like a survival or endless mode, where you just go into a stage with a specific weapon type and keep on going until you die. Now let's get out of all this talk of game modes and see how you actually play the game. In every stage, you're dropped in a 3D environment and are basically on auto run, where you're constantly sprinting forward, shooting at zombies as you go along. Though you're not completely limited on movement, you can strafe to the left and right to take different paths and you actually gotta do that, as when you're going through the stage, you have a limited ammo capacity and have to watch for supply drops so you can pick up more. And completing a stage depends on what kind of game mode you're playing. In arcade mode, you just keep going until you finally get caught by zombies and are killed. But in campaign mode, you have a specific amount of distance you have to get past. And once you get to that point, you'll automatically clear the stage and go back to the menu. Completing these stages gives you different rewards like special weapon upgrades and gold, as well as the ability to unlock new weapons and companion animals that you can take with you. And the latter are pretty useful as they will take down some enemies in the stages as well as have little abilities where they find extra ammo drops or can save you from dying. And the whole dying thing is a pretty interesting aspect of the game because you can get grabbed by zombies when you're wandering through to get a game over. Thankfully, every campaign stage allows you to have one knife with you so you can mash the A button to get out of that grab once. But all of these special unlockables aren't exactly free for you to take. You've got to collect the gold currency to be able to buy and upgrade them from the shop once you unlock them. And just surviving a stage doesn't give you that much gold. What you really need to do for this is go into the side stories in arcade mode to get those really nice rewards, as well as completing challenges during each of the campaign missions, like getting so many kills in a row or with a certain ammo type. And that brings us back to microtransactions or the lack thereof. The mobile version of this game had a much bigger task when it came to unlocking weapons and companions. Not only did you have to have currency to buy them once they were unlocked, but you had to collect a bunch of other items as well, weapon parts if you wanted to buy weapons, and dog treats if you wanted a new companion. It kind of reminds me of the car blueprint system from Asphalt 9 that made that game such a grind. But thankfully, we don't have to worry about that. Microtransactions have been removed, and there's no longer a weapon part and treat system. Once you unlock a companion and weapon, all you have to do is go into the shop and pay the gold to unlock them. Now the gameplay loop in general is pretty fun, especially in small bursts, 
Granted, after a while, it does feel pretty repetitive because there are only maybe four or five different enemy types across the entire game, and despite some parts of the environment looking different, most of the levels look pretty much the same. Not that you'll be spending that much time in the game. The main campaign spans 60 stages, each of which can be completed in maybe a minute or two. Throwing this together with the side stories in arcade mode, you're probably not going to be spending more than about five or six hours on the game. And that ties directly into the biggest criticism when this game launched, the price. When this game launched for the Switch, it released at $35, which is pretty high for the amount of content you're getting here. Now, if you like Endless Runners, it might be worth it if you grab it on a sale, but not for full price. Now let's dive into controls for a second because there is a little bit of a hiccup or glitch that I noticed as I played through the game. You can swap weapons as you're going through a stage, but I found many situations where the swap weapon button wouldn't swap weapons. Now let's get into presentation, which I don't really have much to say about. Graphically, I think the game looks pretty decent. It's not game of the year level graphics, but it looks pretty okay. I also didn't have any problems with performance, so let's go right into battery life. On the original model, Into the Dead 2 has a battery range of 2 hours and 39 minutes up to 3 hours and 22 minutes. On the Nintendo Switch Lite, it has a range of 3 hours and 21 minutes up to 4 hours and 30 minutes. And on the V2 or Redbox 2019 model, it has a range of 4 hours and 30 minutes up to 6 hours and 44 minutes. In conclusion, Into the Dead 2 is a pretty interesting take on the Endless Runner genre and is due credit for removing microtransactions and making everything achievable through in-game means. Unfortunately, that credit and the experience is brought down by its high price tag, repetitive nature of the game, and some control and story hiccups. It's a fun little runner that's worth it on sale, but I probably wouldn't jump on it at full price. Reviews to go rates Into the Dead 2 for the Nintendo Switch a 6 out of 10. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching and have a great day.